Hello, this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and welcome back to Nostalgia Mall Christmas 2022. And today, well, we're going to be looking at a very unique computer. This right here is a Gateway Astro from around 1999 or so. And if this computer looks familiar, that's because uh, LGR recently did a video about this particular computer literally about this particular computer. This is the exact same one that he had in his video. Um, he actually let me have it for this video, and I'm uh, very grateful for him to to do that. So uh, thank you, LGR, for this uh, lovely example of late 90s technology. And so um, I have done a few things to it that we will uh, go over, but I also want to take a tour of the computer itself. So um, on the bottom front, we have a CD-ROM drive, a microphone. I haven't tried the microphone yet on this, actually. And a three and a half inch floppy drive, along with two stereo speakers. As you'll hear shortly, they're not the best sounding speakers in the world, but they get the job done. But as we'll eventually see with this computer, the whole thing um, is not the best in the world, but gets the job done. <laughs> Has a uh, Intel Celeron. This um, is, I believe, a 400 megahertz Celeron socket 370 and designed for Microsoft Windows 98. Okay, we'll uh, turn it around. And on the uh, right side, we get two USB 1.1 ports. And we'll turn it back around again to the back. And it's like I'll have to readjust the camera for this. Okay, on the back we have uh, power, two USB ports, uh, two more USB 1.1 ports, I should say a modem jack, and right here is where the hard drive would have been. Uh, LGR had a 15 gig hard drive in there, but I replaced it with a, uh, I know it's kind of janky looking, a uh, SD card adapter, which I can easily access um, from the back here. This is a 32 gig SD card. Actually sustained an injury putting this in. I was cutting the Velcro for it and cut right into my index finger. <laughs> That was not fun. And right here is, I believe, just a fan. And you can see up there the uh, a uh, somewhat of a carrying handle. And on the other side, we get nothing. <laughs> Okay, I actually want to show you how easy it is to uh, access the innards of this computer because um, unlike a lot of all-in-one computers, this one's a little bit on the easier side to uh, get inside of. So, let's flip it over and yes, this computer does weigh a lot. Alright, and here's the uh, bottom of it. Um, we get some... Uh, Gateway part info right here, uh, model number Gateway Astro, as simple as can be. Okay, uh, there's really nothing to see there. Do see me some instructions down here for opening it. So what you do is you need a long Phillips head screwdriver. And you need to take out these four, is it four? Yeah. These uh, screws, there's actually one six screws that need to go in here, but I only have four of them, but it still works well enough. And it's recommended that you use a magnetized screwdriver to uh, get into this. Okay, uh, only one screw came out. I guess the others will fall out when we pull this uh, tray out, but all you do is just pull this uh, thing right here. 
and voila the uh, motherboard separates from the CRT get these uh, screws before they run loose there we go and here's the uh, bottom of the monitor uh, section which I will not be touching because I do not work on CRTs that's just that's just asking for trouble knowing my uh, <laughs> bad luck with this stuff so we'll slide this on over and right here is the uh, guts of the computer itself And you can see right here the uh, connector that connects into the uh, CRT base there. And uh, to get to the uh, goodies within, we have to take out two more screws to get this, uh, what I believe to be an RF shield, off of here. And we can lift the RF shield off. Not yet, because there's one more screw right here in the middle, a smaller one that I neglected to remove. Again, this is not a tutorial. This is just me fumbling around with stuff. Now we can lift it up. And here is the inside of the computer. Okay, hey, I've gone handheld for this. Uh, there's our three and a half inch floppy drive, just standard issue there. Here's our CD-ROM drive, which is original to this computer. Uh, this is a Samsung uh, CD drive, just a plain old CD-ROM drive, no writing capabilities. And it was manufactured November of 1999. And here's the motherboard itself, and it's very teeny tiny. <laughs> And one interesting thing is that, yes, that is a VGA connector. This um, connector that connects into the monitor it has a cable that goes here straight to the motherboard. So if this uh, CRT were to ever die, in theory, you could connect another uh, monitor up here and uh, use this computer like normal. Well, sort of normal. <laughs> There's our C, uh, not CF, uh, SD card adapter that I added. This is where the hard drive would have originally been. Um, this originally had a 4 gigabyte hard drive from the factory. LGR put a 15 gig in there, and then I doubled that to 32 uh, using this SD card. There's the uh, CPU. That's a socket 370 running a uh, 400 megahertz uh, Celeron and right here is the uh, memory this originally shipped with 64 megs but I've upgraded it to 128 now this has to be PC 100 I found out the hard way if you put PC 133 in here the computer will not work and how did I find that out the hard way well, well, I put PC-133 in here and went through all the trouble of putting the computer back together only to find out it wouldn't work. <laughs> and yes, that is only one memory slot. This is a very, very simple, bare-bones computer. As a matter of fact, we do not get any legacy ports whatsoever. No parallel, no serial, no PS2 mouse or keyboard. If you want to use a keyboard or mouse on here, it has to be USB. Another thing this computer uh, lacks is PCI expansion slots or even ISA slots. So if you want to add a networking capability to this computer, it is very difficult. But I did manage to pull it off as I'll uh, explain um, once we get this computer back together. I forget the exact model number of this particular motherboard. It is made by Intel, but it is a very cheap board. 
And according to LGR, this is roughly the same board, if not the exact same board, that was used in those uh, infamous uh, Hot Wheels and Barbie computers from around the same time this was made. So, yeah. Um, this computer, I believe, was mostly intended for uh, children and the education market. It was not meant to uh, do any heavy-duty gaming or uh, CAD work, for that matter, because this does have um, just Intel uh, video on here, and we all know Intel video at that time was not the best. <laughs> but, um, despite its limitations, I do like this computer, so let's go ahead and put it back together. Okay, I've got it hooked up to uh, power along with a uh, mouse and keyboard. I do not have the original keyboard and mouse that came with this computer. So instead I'm using this uh, blue Microsoft optical mouse. And this uh, modern but uh, retro looking uh, cherry uh, keyboard. A very tiny little keyboard. I've done a video on this before. And so... Uh, just a press of a button, and we get power. Okay, that means we did not break it. <laughs> Would like to get into the BIOS, though, but I think I may have pressed uh, F1 too late. Yeah. Come on. Well, this is a uh, well, BP81010A motherboard. Okay, I got the camera positioned a little bit better so you can see. Again, this is an Intel BP81010A motherboard. Very infamous. <laughs> the uh, as you can see, we got a correct date and time. Um, that's because LGR replaced the uh, CMOS battery in this computer, which was necessary in order for this computer to post. So that's kind of interesting. If you don't have a working battery in this computer, it won't work at all. By the way, do you like uh, being able to uh, set settings in your BIOS? Well, this is not the computer for you, because <laughs> this is all you get. Get an event log. That's nice. Get an on modem ring, automatic restart, quick boot, and all this stuff right here. And you can set your date and time, but this as far as she'll go. So again, this, this really is a basic, simple computer. But I like it, though. It's nice and quaint. <laughs> All right, let's uh, get out of here. And we'll boot into Windows 98. Of course, we'll get scanned disk because we did uh, Control-Alt-Delete it a while ago. There is a uh, factory restore CD available for this computer, but I can't find it anywhere online. If anyone knows, has a copy of the Gateway Astro Restore CD, please let me know. All right, here we are at the desktop. Um, a lot of times it will freeze at this point. And I don't know why, I don't know if it's, uh, some setting I have, but thankfully it looks like this time we had a successful uh, boot. Now, I was going to mention how I was able to manage to get, to get networking working on here. And be it, that's because, you know, uh, it's kind of hard to do on here without any uh, expansion slots. But what this computer does have are USB ports. So I went on eBay and purchased this new old stock... Um, 
USB Ethernet adapter that is designed for Windows 98. And it's made by Thomas and Betts Corporation. Came with a floppy disk. I installed it and we get warp and I'm able to have functioning network capability on this computer, which is a necessity because all my uh, installation files for soft for my old computers for their software are stored on my file server. And um, if you're wondering how, if it's a little bit slow on USB 1.1 speeds, not really actually. It um, speed is actually uh, decent enough for um, what I use it for. Um, obviously, I don't have it connected right now because we're in my living room, which does not have Ethernet connection, so uh, we're having to go uh, networkless at the moment, but I've already got everything installed on here, so no big deal. All right, we'll go to our properties. I did add the Gateway OEM info, which I think is a little bit more new for this. This looks like it from their XP days. Gateway Corporation Astro, Genuine Intel's Celeron processor. And we'll go to our device manager. And under display, we have an Intel 82810 graphics controller. Um, these are notoriously not that good. But, you know, for a computer like this, this is all you need. Because this was mainly intended for children, really. And we got a Motorola 56K modem. The hit actually detects the monitor as a Gateway Astro, which is a nice touch. Oh. And this is the bane of my existence when it comes to uh, old computers. SoundMax Integrated Digital Audio. Works fine with Windows. But if you want good DOS support, well, you are in trouble. This is not going to suit your needs. You want uh, MIDI and DOS? Forget it. And normally that wouldn't be a problem because um, if your computer had Sound Max, you could just install a uh, ISA or PCI uh, sound card, but obviously you cannot do that on this, so it's Sound Max or nothing. Those are all chipset goodies, USB goodies. This computer has weird um, ACPI issues, though. Um, it's working fine right now, though. But when I first installed Windows, I had to go digging for an ACPI driver because um, I was getting a yellow exclamation mark next to it in Device Manager. And shutting down Windows will get me the uh, it's now safe to turn off your computer screen when this computer is more than capable of turning itself off. Okay, let's uh, look at the software. And I've installed a plethora of applications. Um, I'm not sure exactly what originally shipped with this computer, but um, I do know that it came with WorkSuite 99 which um, includes Works 4.5. And we can open our word processor. I'm typing from a weird angle. Actually, you know what? I can just move the keyboard over here. <laughs> Gateway S uh, exclamation exclamation yeah that's what this computer is <laughs> this is exactly what this computer is it's a gateway it's a gate it's a gateway f as equals equals <laughs> no we don't want to save that and with work suite 99 you also get Microsoft greetings from Hallmark. All right, and uh, I've actually never used this before. Um, it's from 1998. Oh, we can look at system information. Yeah, that's just the system information program from Windows 98. 
By the way, this is 98 Second Edition because First Edition is not allowed in this home. All right, we can do. Uh, and I just realized the clicking noise this makes when I go over an icon uh, makes my dog growl. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's just a computer from uh, 1999. There's nothing to be afraid of. Oh, we need a C for that. Yeah, we'll uh, look at that another day because I don't know where I put the CD for that. <laughs> And as far as as far as the monitor is concerned, it's actually quite nice. It has a uh, very sharp picture on it. Not the best CRT I've ever seen, but hey, it looks really good. Um, I must say, Gateway um, always had good monitors. Of course, um, I don't think Gateway made them thems itself, but. Yeah, we're set to 16-bit color at 800 by 600. Sometimes this has glitched out before and uh, taken me down to 16-color uh, uh, mode, which we don't want any of that on here. <laughs> and now for some gaming. Um, believe it or not, the video card in here is 3D capable. In fact, let me do uh, DX Diag. See if we can get some information on it. Yep, the uh, Intel graphics controller. It's uh, got five megs of video memory, that which is an unusual amount, I must say. All right, it's testing uh, Direct 3D with software rendering. Yes, we saw that. Now we're going to use hardware accelerator rendering. Let's let's watch it as six foot flames fly out of this poor little computer. Now that does work. Of course, um, that doesn't really take much horsepower anyway. All right, let's uh, try out a racing game. How about uh, Monster Truck Madness Two? And as you can hear, the speakers are not that great, as I mentioned earlier. And we'll switch this to Direct 3D. Now this is an older game, um, admittedly, so... This game shouldn't have too many issues. Let's see... It'll do Farm Road, how about that? Two laps, no components. Op opponents, not components. I saw enough of those when we un opened the computer. <laughs> Apologies for the refresh rate. Um, it's kind of hard to control on this computer. <laughs> Alrighty. And as you can see, it's actually running quite well on here, surprisingly. Well, not really all that surprisingly. Again, this is an older uh, game. It doesn't require that much horsepower. Monster Truck Madness 2 is a great game, but the original is always going to be the best, in my opinion.
to beat the, to the pass the train? Yes. And I have played the original Monster Truck Madness on this computer. And obviously, um, it works beautifully on here. Now, even when it comes to older computer games, um, my taste is still usually in uh, the more uh, subtle, lower-powered games like this. But we might try to kick it up a notch a little bit. I got an idea. So easy to win a race when you're the only one racing. <laughs> Let's let's kick it up a notch. Okay, let's try a game with a little, that requires a little bit more horsepower. Midtown Madness 2. This is my original childhood copy. Put that in the uh did it go in correctly? No it didn't. <laughs> and yes, it is a very grindy sounding CD ROM drive. As far as the eject mechanism is concerned, but everything else works great on it. It is vibrating a little bit. I have played this game on worse computers, though. I had a uh, one that was never obsolete e machines back in the year 2000, and uh, that was my main computer back then when I was about 10 or 11. And uh, the hardware in it, it still had, I think it had a similar CPU to this, but the video card was even worse, and the uh, memory situation was even worse. 32 megs. But yet, I still played this game on, on that e-machine. So, uh, yeah, this is not probably not going to be the worst I've ever seen this game run on. Let's see what we have as far as graphics options. Okay, it is going to use the the hardware. We'll do a cruise through San Francisco. Oh no! Oh, should I continue? This is not going to be good, is it? Maybe I was a bit too hasty uh, praising this uh, video card. <laughs> uh, tell me when it's over. Now is the time to bust oh. out the map and learn everything about this city. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's... That's not supposed to happen, guys. <laughs> that is... That is not supposed... to be happening. So... Yeah, let's, uh... Let's see if software rendering is a little bit, uh, more pleasant. <laughs> that... That was frightening, folks. Oh, uh, that still doesn't look good. Huh. 
I thought it crashed for a, sh crashed for a second there. <laughs> I don't have a good feeling about this. Even, even my never obsolete e machine did this better. <laughs> Get ready to take a cruise okay. to San Francisco. That's better. Yeah, that doesn't look nearly as glitchy, but as you can see, uh, our frame rate is not really the best. I'm sure back in the day I probably played this in uh, software mode. So this is probably more accurate to what I uh, had back in the day. So yeah, uh... Hardware uh, rendering in this game on this computer is a no-go. <laughs> Even if it says it can do it, don't give it the time of day. Okay, so let's play something that would have been a little bit more appropriate for this computer, something a child would have played. Let's go to our humongous entertainment folder and uh, find us something to uh, load up like, uh, oh, let's say, uh, Freddy Fish 2. And I'll lower the resolution and color. Of course, Humongous Entertainment games require no horsepower at all. They can run on a potato, for all I know. Sorry I'm late, Freddy. I just had to find my Codfish Commando action figure for show and tell. That's okay, Luther. But we better get going before we're late for school. I remember the day I got this game. I was in first grade. It was September 1996, not long after this game came out. And my mom and dad surprised it with me after school one day uh, while we were sitting in the parking lot at the local uh, food lion. And I remember that next night, Hurricane Fran hit North Carolina. And I always like to play with this. Uh, and write stuff on the uh, chalkboard.
kind of reminds me of uh, making the birthday cake in uh, Fatty Bear. represent this computer why not and the cool thing about this uh, game is that when you go out of this <laughs> you can still see it on the chalkboard that is just extremely cool yeah I always keep them in my back pocket George McFly impression. see more of this game uh, or more specifically more of me playing this game uh, go back to my Halloween video from 2017 and you can see me play through the whole thing all right we'll put that back up there now MS DOS it's not a pretty sight folks Here's Sky Rose Christmas Special. Pretty quiet, isn't it? Other than the sound effects. Yeah, because this is Sound Max Audio, we get no MIDI support at all in MS DOS. I mean, you can still play the game just fine. But music is kind of what makes a lot of these games, especially this one. And we can't have that. We can't have that at all. So I went digging for some uh, alternatives. First, I, tr I actually installed DOSBox on here. Yes, it's actually compatible with Windows 9X. And I uh, loaded up Sky Road's Christmas special on it. Well, first we gotta mount a drive. Let's change to Sky Xmas. And normally you would think this would work fine. Yes, we got music now. But at what cost? <laughs> yeah. Even for DOSBox, this computer is just a little bit too underpowered to run it reliably, unfortunately. 
So, I dug even deeper. And I found a uh, forum thread on uh, the Vogons forum from the uh, sometime in the early 2000s. And I came across uh, a program called VDM Sound. Now, I did do a video about VDM Sound back in uh, 2020, the version for uh, Windows XP. But there is also a version for Windows 9X that never got out of the alpha stage, unfortunately, and that was over 20 years ago. Let me try to remember which... Uh, command I need to do. I think it's DOS DRB dot bat. That error is normal. And so now we can, uh, in theory, I hope, run Skyroads again. Listen to that, we've got music! And it doesn't sound choppy. Well, for the most part. <laughs> I think it died. Okay, I did a hard reset and uh, skipped through the intro and uh, yeah, dead again. I can see why VDM sound is never made it past the alpha stage. I wish they had continued development on it, so yeah, that's a no-go. Okay, booting back into Windows. Um, Thankfully, there are a few DOS games that do run uh, well on here, and these are the ones that just use digital audio only, without any uh, uh, help from AdLib, including uh, Jazz Jack Rabbit Holiday Hair 1995. See, sounds great. save this game for Christmas only as far as YouTube is concerned. because I have some uh, programs running in the background. This one probably would run better in DOS mode, but then we probably wouldn't get any sound at all. Die. 
Okay, that's, um, I guess, all there is to show with this uh, Gateway Astro. Um, except I will mention one thing. There were two other uh, versions of this uh, computer, um, exact same hardware and everything, but it, they had different themes. There was a, uh, a Rugrats version and a Blue's Clues version, complete with uh, desktop theming and everything. Um, it'd be cool if I could find the Rugrats theming for this uh, to attach to it, but... That's probably extremely hard to find. And I do actually recall seeing these as prizes on Nickelodeon game shows back in the late 90s, early 2000s, like on Slime Time Live, Double Dare 2000. And I remember seeing them and thinking, oh, that's not a bad looking computer. And you know what? It's not a bad computer. Um, after finally getting to use one uh, for the first time after 20 some years, for the most part, it works great. Um, it does have its quirks, though, as you have as you have seen on uh, camera here. But overall, I really, really like it. And again, thank you to uh, LGR for letting me have this computer. And so let's see if it will shut down properly uh, on its own. Sometimes it will freeze during the Windows 998 is shutting down screen. But until next time, this is Billy Core signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You may also support me on Patreon if you would like. The links to these are in the description below. Until next time, this is Billy Core wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.